Hey, how's it going guys? My name's Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome to the Hashlips Art Engine version release 1.0.3. I'm very excited to show you guys this. It's very cool and I cannot wait to explain. Firstly, if you are new to the Hashlips Art Engine and to this community, this engine is code that I wrote that basically takes a bunch of layers and turns them into new images. You can use any layers that reproduces thousands, if you really want to, new artworks. This is usually work for NFTs, but you can use it for any use case. Anyways, you can watch the previous videos on this program to get a better insight. We walk through each version and the updates in each video. That way you will have a better understanding of how to use the software. If you really just want to go ahead and use it, you can go to github.com, follow this link up here and you'll get to this repo. You can download the code on the main branch over here. Make sure you're on the main branch for the latest code, or you can go here on the right hand side to the latest release. When you click there, you'll see the latest release for this version is 1.0.3. We have added blending mode, formatted metadata, and a printing rarity data, which is an experimental feature that someone from the community contributed to. This is very cool. How do you get started with this? The first thing you want to do is click here on the source code.zip, download this onto your machine, and then you can get started. The next thing you want to do is go to back to the repo and start reading how to install this. You can start by obviously cloning, we already have done that, extract it, and then make sure you have yarn or node install. If you have node installed, you can simply run npm install in the terminal or yarn install in the terminal. I'll show you that just now. But if you get stuck in any way, you can always go up here to the Telegram page, Twitter page, or even the YouTube channel to comment. I highly recommend you guys joining these channels so that you always get up-to-date news and also be a part of this amazing community. Let's dive into all the changes and the exciting new things of this version. After you've downloaded the zip, you need to extract it, open it in an IDE, you'll see all the folders and layers on the left hand side, and then in a terminal, run yarn install. After doing this, it will install the dependencies. The first thing before we get to the code that I want to explain is what are blending modes. Now I've quickly jumped over to Photoshop to illustrate you what blending modes are. Basically blending modes are ways of how pixels are manipulated based on the bottom layer and what it exposes. There's a lot of documentation on this which I'll just get to right now, but in essence if you're in Photoshop select one of these layers at the top layer and you go and play around with its blending modes you can see that the image kind of changes in weird ways now you can get pretty cool effects like this so imagine i can give you guys a way for you to add these blending modes on your layers that's exactly what i've done and that's something that you guys can now play around with how cool is that anyway Getting off Photoshop, and let's quickly just jump back to the concept of where this all started. Well, in the Canvas API, we have access to this composition, a um, global composition object, right? Which allows us to kind of um, give source overflow source in, like there's a lot of things, including these blending modes that you see in Photoshop, like lighter, copy, uh, multiply, screen, overlay. These are all the same kind of blending modes that you see in Photoshop. I highly recommend to you guys to go to these documentations to read up more on how you can add this to your image. But in a basic example, so that you don't have to read this much documentation, 
is this is how it works. Imagine that this blue box over here is your bottom layer. The next layer going on top of it has a source over. It means that it's just going to go on top of it. Now, what I also want you to, to um, realize is that as we click through these things, you'll see different, I would say, um, variations happening to the image here on the right hand side. These are not really variations, but ways that these two objects interact with each other based on what composition was set. Here you can see that if this one is selected, it will actually bring the bottom layer to the top and so on. Mostly what you want to do is play around with these lighter, copy, uh, XOR, maybe overlay, multiply. These are actually the blending modes that changes the color and interesting ways. I will leave this all up to you guys to play around with. You guys can go to these um, URLs and go and play and have fun. But we are here to show you how you can do this with the code. Perfect. Let's jump back just for a second and let's go and see what we need to do next. Well, we've installed all the dependencies with yar now, so you can see it's done. So to do a test run, we can run node index.js. Once we run this command for the very first time, it's going to load all the layers that we have over here and taking in consideration in our configuration.js file in under the source folder, here are the layers orders. Now you can see that we said that we want to create about five images de depending on these orders and the layers of these uh, folders basically and reproduce new images. Now if we look in the build folder over there, we can see that indeed it created five new images along with metadata. Something with the metadata that I want you guys to now realize is that this is formatted. Remember that previously it was in this long string? Well, I've gone ahead and formatted this for you guys in the code so that it's prettier when you look at it. That's one change that also happened in this version. But enough about the metadata. Let's quickly talk about how we get to this point. Firstly, if you want to create your own collection, open the source folder and only open the config.js. In the layers folder, you put various layers in here such as background, bottom lid, eye color and so on and you represent them in an object, this object, in the layers order like so. This layers order array makes sure that the first layer gets rendered first, then the second, then the third. So if your layers are positioned correctly like on top of each other, it will flow in a very nice way, resulting in a very cool image that you actually can build up. How cool is that? Keep in mind that we also have rarity weight, and this is determined by adding a hashtag 1, um, 10, whatever weight you want to add to your images to have the weights. I explained these weights in the previous video in detail, so go and have a look at that. Basically for this update, what I wanted to show you now is much like our blending modes in Photoshop or the blending modes that Canvas produces, I've created an object and you can see it under blending mode.js over here that defines all the different types of blending modes that we get. This blending modes object is exported and imported in the config.js under the modes um, constant. Now, in order to use this, you can choose whichever layer you want. Let's for instance take this bottom lid. You right after the name put a comma, you put a space, you put blend, like so. Then you put colon and then you put the mode. So mode or caps because we are going to use this constant value. The constant value over here, remember, represents all these files in the blend modes.js. 
So if we jump back to config.js, if we go to the mode here, we can put a full stop, which is a dot notation uh, way in coding to kind of get to that value. Now here you can see we have a bunch of things to choose from. You can type in any one. I'm going to choose maybe multiply and then let's see what happens. I'm going to run this collection again here at the bottom by entering node um, node space index dot js. All right. Once I've done that, I can go back to the build folder over here, which is generated for you when you run node js. If I look at the images now, check what happens. Our bottom lid is actually using multiply on all the layers. How cool is that? Keep in mind that how this method works is it will only apply this blending mode to this layer. So in turn, you have to be very smart on which layers you use this on. This might not always be the desired effect. So play around with what you want to use. We can also use maybe color. Let's check how color looks. We run node, the uh, node space index.js at the bottom here. Just a side note for a shortcut. Just press the up arrow in your terminal and you'll get to the most recent command. I'm going to press enter to run this. Perfect. Let's check at the new look. So you see this is all now purple, but it has this transparency look to it. We can go ahead and play around with a bunch of these. So let's put one on the eye color. Remember your, your comma and then this line. So comma on the shine. Maybe let's do one on the bottom lid. Let's turn this one into multiply. Uh, or maybe the iris would be cool for color burn. We can maybe do for the toplet um, color doge. Anyway, let's try this and see what happens. I'm going to save this file by pressing command S in the terminal. Press up arrow to get to the node index.js or just type it in and press enter. Now let's check at the new ones that's been rendered. How cool is this guys? This looks like completely different artworks. And I think you guys can agree that this is pretty exciting, right? So I'm very excited for you guys to try this out. So this is how you do it. It is explained in the documentation. So if you get lost, go back to um, the Hashlips art engine repo, scroll down and just read the documentation on how to implement it and what you can implement. All right. Let's quickly jump back to the code because one last thing I also want to mention is the fact that I've added an opacity. So let's say that I want the iris, the black part of the eye to be very transparent. I'm going to click on uh, iris just after the name, put a comma put a, and then type opacity. After typing opacity, I have to give it opacity, which is a decimal value between zero and one. I'm going to make it 0 0.3, which will make it very, very light and, and the transparency will be almost 30%, um, which is fine. And then I also want to do it maybe on my actual eyeball, but the eyeball I'm going to make very transparent, maybe 0 0.1. Let's run this and see how it looks. So I'm going to run this go into my artwork and you can see how it changes. I'm just going to also show you that you don't only have to add one of these. You can after a blending mode, also add a comma, also add an opacity. So you can really play around with this and go crazy and see the results that you that you want to get. Now there's so much opacity that we almost can't see the image. So uh, maybe don't go too wild with this. I'm going to backspace uh, just to the point where I can get something happening, which is pretty cool. I liked this color burn from the start. And I also want to try here on the bottom lid. I want to try overlay. Let's check quickly how that looks. And how cool does that look, guys? This eye looks actually so real now because of the color burn. It gives this white-ish effect there. 
and I really like how this comes out. I mean, check this out, guys. This, you can even see the veins or the little red veins that I drew on the image before that I couldn't see before because there was no blending mode on it. There was no possibility for me to overlay things in this way and yet this creates interesting effects. So that was the first and coolest change for this video. The last thing that I just want to add that's an addition to this uh, whole version 1.0.3 is the fact that if you go here in the bottom of your terminal and you just go a bit up, remember that your layers needs to have weights and how you add a weight is with a hashtag and a number and hashtag number, hashtag number, all right? You can use a different delimiter by setting the delimiter field over here to whatever you want to, but then you need to update all your layers. I'm using hashtags because it's quite global. Lastly, if you want to see the rarity weights and their occurrences and a bit of data on it, you can go ahead and run node rarity uh, data.js. This is a file that Jake Johnson contributed to and thank you so much for doing so. I love it when the community adds some code to this and I get to have a look. Later we'll refine it a bit, but this is an experimental feature and we'll give it a go. So if you say node space rarity data.js, you run it, you can basically see that this code extracts per layer what all the weights are, the trait and the chance and its actual occurrences. Um, I'll still have to look at the code and just make sure that um, it's doing the right thing. But I went ahead and pulled it into the repo because I think it's quite cool and it doesn't abstract from the main code because it's nicely written and actually is just using features in the main.js. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and the fact that we can now generate artworks with all these different blending modes. Like I said, I wish you guys such a great path with this code and please share with us the artworks that you do. I always appreciate it. My last comment is that if I do not get back to you on your comments, please don't feel bad. Trust me, I would love to help each and every one of you. The Telegram community is going strong. And if you want to be a part of that, go to this repo, go into the documentation and go and find our Telegram group. Alternatively, you can go to our website and find all of our social media channels there. I promise you someone in the community will help you out. But until next time, until version 1.0.4 comes out, I'll see you again. In the meantime, we might even start building interesting smart contracts. So stick around for the next videos to come.